Hello and welcome to a presentation about vectors. To start with, I've just got a little uh, a starter to get you thinking about um, the topic. So we have a pirate and he's been given some instruction cards to find buried treasure. Uh, and you can see them, he has to start at the palm tree and this is the order of the instructions. Walk five paces east, uh, so he walks five paces east, uh, and then five paces north, seven paces east, and three paces north. Uh, and he gets to the treasure. Great. Okay. What happens if our pirate gets confused and mixes his cards up? Will it matter? So he, he takes the new instructions and walks the path, and he still finds that he gets the buried treasure. So it doesn't seem to matter. Any order? So we try a different order. Hmm, doesn't seem to matter. Okay. Another order? Alright. So actually, it doesn't matter what order he follows the cards in. As long as he starts at the palm tree, he'll get to the buried treasure. Okay? So what you've really learnt there, or witnessed, is that uh, it doesn't matter what order you add up vectors. So if we take all four cards and we add them up, they're really just equal to this green arrow here. Okay? Um, and it doesn't matter what order you added them up, just like with numbers, if you take 5 plus 6 plus 7, it doesn't matter if you add 7 to 6 to 5, it doesn't make the numbers different. So vectors are just like that, uh, it doesn't matter what order you add them in, um, and the, the sum of those vectors is just going to be the arrow that goes from the first, the tail of the first vector, the tail being the non-arrow head, uh, from the tail of the first vector to the head of the last vector. And actually what's happened here is the displacements, the yellow displacement has been added tail to tip to the red displacement. So the red tail is on the yellow's tip and the black um, displacement vector, his tail is on the red tip and so on the blue vector's tail is on the black vector's tip. So you just add them tail to tip and you get the sum of all the vectors being this green one. Okay, so we're going to be revising vectors. Um, what you should know already about vectors is that a vector has magnitude, which is just size, uh, like those displacements had sizes. You could either be displaced by 10 meters or 20 meters or seven paces or five paces, and they also have direction. So you could be displaced north, south, east, or west. Okay, and even in three-dimensional space, you could be displaced up and down as well. Okay, um, so um, and the aim of this presentation is to to get you to be able to add vectors graphically. Okay, which just means using um, geometry and uh, graphical means drawing rather than using trigonometry or Pythagoras and stuff like that. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do in this is firstly I'm going to uh, use PowerPoint to show the concept and then I'm going to use another program to uh, actually show you how to use a pen and paper and a protractor to answer these types of questions. So let's look at this first IGCC question. Okay. So we've got a truck that's gone off the road into a ditch Okay, and two breakdown vehicles A and B are used to pull the truck out of the ditch. So here's our truck and this is the breakdown vehicles A and B. Okay. Right, at one point in the rescue operation, breakdown vehicle A is exerting a force of 4,000 newtons, so this is breakdown vehicle A, so he's exerting a force of 4,000 newtons, and breakdown vehicle B is exerting a force of 2,000 newtons. It's always a good idea to annotate your diagram as you go along. Okay, read the rest of the question. It tells us that uh, using a scale of 1 centimeter to be 500 newtons, make a scale drawing to show the resultant force on the truck. Okay, this is important. Okay, right. So at this point, you'd break out your pen, pencil, ruler, and all that kind of stuff. But I'm just going to quickly show you the concept with PowerPoint. So I've drawn a an arrow, uh, which is 2,000 newtons, so it'd be four centimeters, uh, and another arrow for the other force. And I've obviously made sure that this angle is 45 degrees. Okay, and then I'm just going to take this vector here, the uh, vector from truck B, and I'm going to add it tail to tip to the other vector. So in PowerPoint I can just shift it along like that. So 
I'm now going to basically say that this vector a and b will be equal to my new vector here. If I then measure it, I can go ahead and uh, work out the force of the two um, vectors a and b. The two forces a and b, because it's 11 centimeters long, I'll use a ruler to measure it. Um, 11 times 500 gives me 5,000. 500 newtons. So the sum of vectors A and B is actually 5,500 newtons. Okay. Um, if I break out the protractor now, I could measure the angle, because it does tell me in the question from the direction of the resultant force to the direction of the road. Uh, so, so if I put this uh, vertical line in and measure this angle here, I'll find it's 30 degrees. Okay. Uh, just continue to the last part of the question. State why the resultant force is an example of a vector quantity. All vectors have uh, direction as well as magnitude. Okay, so uh, just the, the definition. Okay, and give an example of a vector quantity that's not a force. So as we saw in the beginning of the presentation uh, with our pirate, displacement is a good example, but there are many others as well. Okay, so now that's part one of the presentation. Now I'm going to go and do this on an interactive whiteboard and use the tools that you would have to use in the exam. Okay. Okay, so here's the same question. This time I'm going to do it um, the same way you'll have to do it, using a protractor and a ruler and a pencil and so on. Okay, so I'll just quickly label up the diagram. Labeling diagrams helps a lot to stop you making silly mistakes. So, uh, vehicle A is exerting a force of 4,000 newtons. So that's here, 4,000. Okay, and vehicle B exerting a force of 2,000 newtons. Okay. And I have to use a scale of 1 centimeter to 500 newtons. So uh, this is 2,000 newtons, so that's 4 lots of 500. So that means it's going to be 4 centimeters. Okay, and this is 4,000, twice that, so it'll be 8 centimeters. Okay, now, uh, first thing you need to do is you need to draw... Uh, well, it's what I do anyway. I mean, the first thing I do is I draw a uh, just a vertical line uh, that I can measure off and my my starting point. Okay, right. So I've got my vertical line in there, and now I'm going to draw the first vector on. I may as well do the vertical vector, which is vector B, and it's going to be a size of four centimeters. Okay, so start right at the beginning. 4 centimeters, that's vector B. Okay, just put the uh, arrowhead on. When you draw the arrowheads on, be very careful not to make your vector longer, otherwise you're going to uh, put inaccuracies into your drawing. Alright, so now I want to draw in vector A. I have to draw it in at 45 degrees, as is shown in the diagram. Okay, so uh, I have to use the protractor. Okay. So put the protractor right on the um, tail of this vector. Move the measuring thing around to 45, 4.8, 45, okay. Put a little mark so I can see uh, where to draw my line now. Okay, so I've got this little red mark, which hopefully you can see here, and that's what I'm going to be lining the ruler up with. Okay. Um, I'm going to do the same thing again and just put a uh, a guideline in for myself to follow. Uh, better put it in actually starting from the correct spot. Um, okay, so this is just a line that I can use to measure off later. Uh, I may not use it; it's just habit that I do that. Okay, so now I want to measure the correct length. Okay, so this um, vector, vector A, is 8 centimeters long on the, uh, at this scale. So measure down to 8 centimeters. Okay, again I'm going to draw the head on the uh, vector and careful not to make the vector any longer than it uh, is. Right, so now I've got uh, the diagram set up ready 45 degrees. 
Um, what I'm going to do now is I can either move this vector and put the tail of it on the tip of this vector, or I can move this vector and put the tail of it on the end of this vector. <coughs> as long as I keep the angles the same and uh, the magnitude the same, I should get the correct result. Uh, since in the previous part I did this vector to here, uh, this time I'm going to do it the other way around, just to show you that it doesn't matter what order you add vectors in. Okay, so <coughs> I can see roughly um, that it's going to be somewhere here, right, and the angle is going to be 45 degrees here. Okay, having that already in my mind just stops me from making silly mistakes. People do kind of get a bit flummoxed in the exams with these questions. Okay, so I'm going to be measuring from this blue line here, 45 degrees, up to here. Okay, that's why I put those guidelines in. Guidelines just make it much easier later on. Okay, so again, I'm going to put a little mark at 45. Use my ruler to then draw obviously a straight line. Just get it exactly in the right spot. Okay, that looks good. Okay, so I need to measure exactly 8 centimeters again. Okay, good. Get him out of the way. <coughs> Finish the arrow head off because it's a vector, it's got a head. Okay, right. So now I think I'm in a position to mark out my answer. I move my uh, ruler and I measure from tail of the first vector to the tip of the last. I might need to make this ruler a little bit bigger. Okay. So it's about the same as last time, nearly 11 and a half centimeters. Maybe if I get it exactly the right place, yeah, about 11.4 centimeters. So as you can see, it's not exactly the result I got last time, but that's what you get when you draw graphically. That's why you must draw as accurately as possible. Okay, so I've drawn in the answer. Again, I'm just going to put the, ta the uh, tip on that. Okay and its length was 11.4 centimeters um, so I can't put the answer in the magnitude of the resultant force as 11.4 centimeters, I've got to use the scale again to calculate it 11.4 multiplied by um, 500 <coughs> and that should give me an answer of, well, I'm not going to do it in my head. Uh, I'll get the calculator. Okay, so 11.4 multiplied by 500. 5,700. Good, that's within the range the mark scheme would have accepted. 5,700, and of course, always put the units. And it's a good idea to underline your answers so the examiner has no problem in working out uh, what you're giving as your answer. Okay, so uh, now the direction of the resultant force, and it's important here, it says to the direction of the road, which <laughs> which somehow I've managed to uh, lose there. So to, to the direction of the road. Um, so now I need to just measure this angle here. Okay, so again just get the protractor over and uh, it's 31 or 30.7 I'll just uh, yep yeah, I'll just uh, round that up 31 degrees okay I hope you found this useful if you've got any comments please make them uh, I used Sancor uh, Uniboard free piece of software to do this little bit of drawing <coughs>